the best behaved kid in the whole world! Maybe... Ladybug? This hurts really bad! Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. It is the perfect time to be with your family and friends, give away presents, be there for others, celebrate the birthday of our Lord, and talk trash about stupid-ass Lady Cock! How's it going, everyone? My name is Cyrus the Great, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful Christmas time. But allow me to make it better. Or worse. It depends on you. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Christmas special of Disastrous Fecal Matter, Santa Claus, also known as a Christmas special. The most important detail to know about this episode is that it's a musical. When it comes to musicals, I am not that amazing at analyzing musicals because I'm not a big fan of this particular genre. I'm more into action, suspense, gangster, superhero, comedy, etc, etc. The musical genre, it sticks out as a sore thumb to me. I have watched a ton of masterclass musicals such as Snow White, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and the rest of the Disney Princess movies, including Anastasia. That's Disney property, so it can count as a Disney Princess movie. Rest assured, I know a good musical when I see one. One, or hear one. So is this a good musical? Well, before we get to the songs, let's talk about the story. Once upon a time, Marisu gives out presents, even to this guy who doesn't have an official name. Turns out it's Adrian's first Christmas without his mom, Emily. Off topic, but I heard that in season five, Emily will finally have physical appearance and will finally see her talk and move and, and not just a freaking picture. Am I excited for that? Does this look excited to you? No. I just want this terrible day to be over and done with. I hate Christmas! Yes! I hate Christmas! <laughs> Unlike in season 4, where his motivation to be sad is pure selfish love for Ladybug. Oh god, I really don't know why they thought that was a good idea. The context here is that he lost his mother a year ago, and this is his first Christmas without his mother being around. Something I can actually feel bad for. Sure, I don't know anything about Emily at that time, and I don't care about Emily anymore. At least his reactions make him sympathetic. Unlike in season 4, season 4 Adrian, I wanna shove my humongous sore action figure up his keister. Pre-season 4 Adrian, I wanna buy him a soda. Chris Christmas special, Adrian. I honestly want to give him a hug. Uh, where did he get that? Before he storms out as Cat Noir, Marisu's present can be seen attached to his belt. As the stupid song goes on, the present disappears and reappears and disappears again before and after he detransforms. The present is nowhere to be seen. He's not carrying it. It's not in his pockets. It's, it's nowhere. So where exactly did he get that? Your guess is as good as mine. He got that from his ass after he shoved it up there. Anyway, everyone started to worry about Adrian, especially Marisu. Meanwhile, Adrian encounters Santa Claus the real Santa Claus. As Santa drives Adrian home, he gets falsely accused of being an akumatized villain. Santa Claus gets akumatized, transforming into Santa Claus. <laughs> Santa Claus, Santa Claus. Clever girl. He looks like Dr. Robotnik. Changed my mind. Even though he's called Santa Claus, he doesn't have any claws. Those are not claws, they're sharp fingernails. Big difference. Santa Claus wreaks havoc all over the city of Paris. Actually, he wreaks havoc only to the people who mistreated and harmed him. Adrian is safe from his punishment. After after defeating Santa Claus Trojan style, Gabriel decides to have a heart for once in his life, which is very appropriate because it's Christmas. He invited all of Adrian's friends for a Christmas feast, and the episode ends there. Overall, the story is okay. The problems I have with the story are not that big of a deal. For instance, Santa was able to forgive the kids for disrespecting and hurting him, but he wasn't able to do that with Ladybug and already jumped to the conclusion that nobody believes Christmas anymore. I think it's because they're just kids, so he was able to excuse them. Ladybug is not a kid, therefore he was wasn't able to excuse, but it's Christmas! Why didn't you forgive her? Everyone has their limits, even in the most wonderful time of the year. I guess, whatever. Another thing that bothered me is the part where Ladybug and Cat Noir are fighting Dr. Robo- I mean Santa Claus. When Cat Noir fell down, he didn't bother to save himself. Uh, tell me why. Tell me why. Can't he fly using his magical staff? Well, it's not flying, it's more like gliding. But can't he lift himself up with a staff? Yes, and his staff is right up his ass. Why didn't he try to save himself? Because it's his first Christmas without his mother, and he's having a hard time coping with it, making it difficult for him to focus. Okay, that makes sense, but it wasn't acknowledged while he was being so stupid twice in a row. Take a look at this scene. Cat Noir was about to cataclysm a Christmas tree. What he's doing is stupid, but at least the context is there, and it was acknowledged, which made me understand him. If the same thing happened 
here, like show an extremely brief flashback of Emily and Adrian's past Christmas, or show the audience how depressed he is because of his mother, then it would be acceptable. But instead, they unintentionally made Cat Noir look like a jackass. Twice in a row. Putting that aside, I will say this. They made Adrian sympathetic for real. Something I really miss because recently, they tried to do the same thing in season 4 but failed. Insultingly failed. This was a breath of fresh air. The rest of the dramatist personae are tolerable, including Mari Sue. I know she's not a Mary Sue in this episode. She's totally fine, but for some reason, I can't stop saying Mari Sue. Mari Sue, 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 Mari Sue. Gabriel is okay. Though I'm willing to admit that the way he screamed Adrian was so incredibly performed by the voice actor. It literally reminded me of Rocky for a second. I'm not joking. Adrian! Other than that, it's an average story that doesn't stick with me. Time for the main event, the songs. French versus English dub. I'm not ready for this. That's what she said. I didn't listen to the Italian dub or Spanish dub or Ugandan dub or any other dub, if there are, because I'm lazy and I can't take it anymore. I do not want to dedicate myself to this stupid ass Christmas special too much. Also, I don't care if they use autotune or pitch correction in these songs, okay? Because at the end of the day, if it sounds good, it sounds good. If it sounds bad, it sounds bad. Simple as that. Same way I would argue about Godzilla. I don't care if they use rubber suits or CGI. If he looks good, he looks good and vice versa. So if you're planning on debating in the comments below on whether they really used autotune or manual tune, I mean, uh, pitch correction, eh, same thing. Go ahead, do whatever you want, I won't care. Now to kick things off, let's start with song... Shut up, dude, I'm about to review a musical! Song numero uno, Marisu and the Bakery, English dub. Could you repeat that? I couldn't hear you. Is the French dub better? Joyeux Noël, Chloé! I don't know, but what I do know is Chloé in the French dub sounds perfect to be in a metal band. Joyeux Noël, Marie! If Lady Baby is ever gonna make a comeback, Chloé has got to join and do the screams. Replacement for Emily since she's now in passcode. <laughs> Song number two, Cat in the Night. Cat Noir sucks at singing in the English dub, change my mind. He sounds like a, a robot. Don't get me wrong, robotic vocals can work if it works for the song. Look at Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That band has two vocalists, Minami who does the screams and So who does the cleans. The clean vocals are heavily vocoded, which made him sound like a robotic angel and it mixes very well with the demonic screams. They masterfully combined multiple genres because of that. <laughs> But Cat in the Night is an entirely different story. Cat Noir sounding like a robot running low on batteries is terrible. The French dub makes Cat Noir sound a little less robotic, but terrible nonetheless. Song number 3, Brand New Day. Basically the same thing as Cat in the Night. He sounds like a robot. He sounds agonizing. French and English dub. And if you thought Misery is just getting started, then you're correct. I wish that <laughs> Song number four, The Boy I Secretly Love. The title is a lie. The Boy I Secretly Love? Bro, it's no secret that you love this boy. Everyone knows, especially your stupid best friend. Oh wait, I forgot that this is pre-season four Marisu, back when she used to be so unbelievably obsessed with a boy she barely knows. No, I don't believe that you love him. You're just infatuated, like a hell of a lot. I believe Anya loves Dimitri, but you love Adrian? Nah. The title should be The Boy I'm Publicly Obsessed With. Anyway, about the song in English dub, it sounds weird, not in a decent way, because if you listen closely, don't you think her vibrato sounds so artificial? It sounds off. It, it sounds terrible. It's like the singer didn't practice at all and they needed to use autotune to fix her vocal track last minute or they used pitch correction, but it was incredibly rushed. Well, autotune or not, pitch correction or not, her vibrato sounds awful. Ironically, or maybe it's not ironic, it depends on you. Chloe has much better vibrato in the English dub. Merry Christmas, Merry Night. Now that's how you do it, ladies and ladies. Putting the vibrato aside, the song makes me feel embarrassed about myself. It's pure cringe. French dub sounds better, but that's not saying much. Song number five, Bad Santa Claus. I can't get over that name, Santa Claus. Unpopular opinion, Santa Claus's vocals are enjoyable. This guy is an ugly looking supervillain, and the fact that his vocals are, I'd like to describe as intense, is extremely fitting for him, and it generally sounds nice. Fun fact about me, I freaking love songs with intense vocals. <laughs> 
I cannot say the same thing for Plague. Yes, his vocals define who he is. He's a funny, cheese-loving Kwame, but where's the quality? That was fine with Santa Claus because his voice is generally pleasing in my opinion, but Plague, he sounds dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. Especially in the French dub. <laughs> As much as I like Plague as a character, I hope he never sings again. Bottom line, Santa Claus is a passable villain song. It's still a bit cringy. I mean, the way he keeps on dabbing. Is that dabbing? I think not. His arm is not covering his face. Last and least, we all have the right. It's as bad and as embarrassing as Cat in the Night and a Brand New Day. English dub and French dub. But at least, Plague did not sing again. Yay. Honestly, nothing more to say, other than the fact that it is the official message of this Christmas special. And the message is, is good, but the way they delivered it, we all have the right to get presents on Christmas nights. But it was just a trap. It was just a Trojan horse. So I think the real lesson is, Haha, <laughs> you fell for my trap! So that's all the songs of the Christmas special. Before we conclude, I'd like to add that my sister has a lot to say about this. Because fun fact about my sister, she is a huge musical fanatic. She is much better at analyzing musicals than me. Here are my sister's words. Song number one, Marinette and the Bakery. First of all, I can already imagine the amount of fans singing this on Christmas. It sounds like it is trying so hard to be a classic. I'm not sure if that's the intention, but it might be a Christmas classic to the fans. Second, I went insane listening to this song, trying to identify some pitch correction. There's some on Marinette and Alia, but it's not that bad. During the line, Merry Christmas, Alia and your family, you can hear a bit of pitch correction at the word family. Merry Christmas, Alia. The next line, thanks my BFF, the same to you three, has a slight pitch correction at the word three. Thanks my BFF, the same to you three. Like I said, it's not that bad. Honestly, it's a bit of a nitpick to point out since I noticed it around the fourth time I listened. Plus, I can't tell if it's the audio quality or pitch correction. It's there in the French dub too. Actually, that's a problem with all the songs. But I'll talk about it later. Though I will say, I like Marinette's French voice than the English one. <laughs> In conclusion, it's fine. Cringe level 6 out of 10. The music is alright. It sounds like a carol that elementary students will sing or write. This is the most Christmas sounding song out of them all. Both the English and the French version has the same level of cringe, so it doesn't matter either way. Song number 2 and 3, Cat in the Night and a Brand New Day. Plague ruined the songs. My guess is that Plague singing is played for laughs, and I get that it was kind of funny, but it was also annoying. Cat Noir sounds like he's dehydrated. It's like Hugh Jackman in Les Miserables. They are the guilty. Everyone most of Cat Noir's singing sounds like talk singing. It's when someone is simply saying the lyrics and not singing them. I don't recall the actual term, but I always called it talk singing, so I'll use that. Both the English and French voice sound like talk singing. The only time Cat Noir sounds like he's singing is towards the end. All in all, don't make Plague sing again! Cringe level 10 out of 10, in a bad way. It would be a 6 out of 10, but Plague sang, so... 10 out of 10. Cat Noir's part was okie dokie, but why did Plague sing? Tell me why. Tell me why. Plague's voice is annoyingly atrocious in any language. Cat Noir's voice is one step ahead in the French dub. <laughs> Song number four, the boy I quote unquote secretly love. The second half is the real good stuff. The first half is just exposition and it's simply not as catchy as the chorus. Marinette's voice here sounds older, like she's 18 or 20. My guess is that Ladybug is a mature Marinette, so that's why she sounds slightly older here, but it sounds a bit off. When she said the words love, fear, here, and tonight, there's a weird vibrato. I genuinely cannot tell if that's the audio quality, pitch correction, or both. The song sounds better in French, and it's the version I remember more. I don't have anything against the English VA of Marinette. She still sounds pleasant, but the French VA of Marinette sounds recommendable to me. I found the chorus cute, until I remember that this is Marinette's love ballad. Santa Claus is a season 2 episode. Marinette had her creepy stalker-like behavior at that point. It kind of made the song slightly creepy to me. But it's fair enough. I knew that this is the number that I'll listen to, outside the episode. Because the chorus was so catchy. Best song in the whole special. But that's not saying much. Cringe level infinite out of 10. But in a good way. Hilariously bad attempt at a love ballad. Due to Marinette's stalker-like behavior. Song number 5. Bad Santa Claus. One of the weakest biggest villain songs I have ever heard. I find it funny that Santa Claus kinda sounds like Beetlejuice, but his singing voice is clear. We should've carpeted way more DMs, now we're never gonna see 
video. I think they should have kept the same voice direction so that there's something to note. This and the last song are the weakest in this episode. It's mostly an I am song instead of an I want song, which is common for villain songs since most villains don't have that many details into their lives. I am songs, songs that allows the characters to explain who they are or how they feel. Examples are Gaston and Cruella de Vil. I want songs. In these songs, characters tell us what they truly desire, what motivates them. Examples are Part of Your World and Bell Reprise. Not saying there isn't any detail, but there's not as much as the protagonist. I'm not saying that I want songs work as villain songs. What I'm saying is that it's a smart move that they went to that direction because of time. This song and the entire episode are short, so it'll be convoluted for the viewer or view worse. If the villain song is an I want song, the reason why I said mostly an I am song is that there's a part in the song where Santa Claus tells his plan to Adrian, even though it's short. Again, I cannot tell if there's any pitch correction because it's either the audio quality or they did a fine job hiding it. Get away with making fun of me. It doesn't matter if I'm listening to the French or English dub, his voice sounds the same to me. To conclude this, I want to say that Hawk Moth should have had his own villain song. Bad Santa Claus is meh. Cringe level 7.3 out of 10. One of the worst villain songs I have ever heard. Santa Claus's voice makes Plague sound tolerable. Last song, we all have the right. Why? Tell me why. Tell me why. This song is the most boring in my opinion. Yes, it does give the message of the special. However, in the context of the plot, it's just a diversion for Ladybug to get the hat. Because of this, the song is so short, so I easily forgot about it once I finished the special. Cat Noir is talk singing again. He still sounds dehydrated. We stand down and surrender. Can Ladybug please give him a glass of hot lemon water? He needs it. My issues with this song are similar to my issues with Cat in the Night and A Brand New Day. I ran out of things to say at this point. Due to my sanity, hanging on a thread, this is all I have to say. This and the opening song sound like Christmas carols in the worst ways, and I hate it! Cringe level, 9 out of 10. The second most Christmas sounding song, and the least memorable. General thoughts. The songs are mediocre. My biggest problem with analyzing these songs is the fact that the audio in the episode is painful. There are some moments that the instrumental is very loud and is as loud as the vocals. It hurts my ears and I despise it. I made listening to the songs torture. This problem is evident in Cat in the Night. They seriously need to lower the instrumental, at least by a bit. It's too loud. I sometimes can't hear Cat Noir's vocals. I'll take your symbol of joy and burn it into the ground. Although I wish that the instrumentals were the only things that I heard during Plague's part. Another problem with them is that they are too short. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. Good one. The longest were Cat in the Night and Bad Santa Claus, which were about two minutes long. The rest were around a minute and a half, but never two minutes. All of the songs contribute about six to seven minutes of the 22 minute episode. This makes me wish that the Christmas special was like, I don't know, 40 to 50 minutes long. Yes, I want it to be somewhat of a movie. This will make the songs longer and probably more memorable, or more songs in general. Songs like Hawkmoth's villain song. I was looking forward to a beautifully stupid villain song from Hawkmoth, but no! A longer special is the only way I I could get that, unless someone makes it. I can't believe that Ladybug's Love Ballad is the best song in the episode, and I'm talking about the chorus. The first verse is unremarkable. In conclusion, this special is... Meh. The only thing I'll remember is the chorus of the boy I secretly love. However, I will gladly listen to all of the songs here, then watch five minutes of Shrek the Musical. In conclusion, this Christmas special is mostly a disaster. The story is okie dokie yada choky, but the majority of the songs it contains ruin everything. They sound so robotic in a bad way, so dry, so unhuman, so cringy, so bad. They're just so bad, you know? Especially Marinette's vibrato, and especially Cat Noir's robotic and lifeless voice. What did I say before? Adrian in this Christmas special makes me want to give him a hug? I take that back. There's one song that I enjoyed listening to, but it's it's one song. One song. One song. Definitely not enough to save the entire special. Also, that one song is not even that great in general. It's passable at best, cringy at least, forgettable at most. You know, that's what this entire special is. Forgettable. Forgettable and cringy. If you're ever planning on watching or letting your kids watch a Christmas special on Christmas days, I highly not recommend this. Instead, just watch Charlie Brown Christmas, Home Alone, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Klaus, that Star Wars Christmas special, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Christmas special. Watch anything but this. 
this because with this you and your kids will probably be bored to death and cringe to death at the same time however I will say this Christmas special would be an amazing recommendation for punishing your kids if they ever pridefully did something bad tell them to watch this Christmas special it's a great way to discipline that's about the only value this Christmas special has that and Santa Claus's song I'm giving it a 3 out of 10 I just want to feel okay I have never experienced watching and listening to a miserably terrible and lousy musical. So of course, there are far worse musicals out there. But from what I've seen so far, Miraculous Ladybug's Christmas special is the worst musical I have ever had the displeasure of experiencing. If they're planning on making another Christmas special, please do so. Just make sure it's not a musical, for God's sake. They have officially made a reputation. They will forever be known as the worst musical directors, writers, and composers of all time. Hey, look at the bright side. At least, at least N Nino didn't sing. <laughs> Imagine Nino singing. That's all I have to say. I never ever want to see this Christmas special again. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Merry Christmas to all of you filthy animals and happy birthday Jesus Christ. See you guys in 2023. I give you my heart and I believe in you